Our speaker today is Dr. George H. A George M. Hillman, Jr. He serves as the Vice President for Education and Professor of Educational Ministries and Leadership here at DTS. George came to Dallas Seminary with years of pastoral experience in church and parachurch organizations, both in Texas and in Georgia. He's a graduate of Texas A&M. There we go. Had to get that out of the way. Texas A&M University and Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. George has a passion for education, spiritual formation, and leadership development. He is a rabid college fan and loves good barbecue. What's not to like about that? He is married and has, he is married to Jana, and Jana is here today. Would you at least raise your hand and let us welcome you, Jana? And they have one daughter, Catherine. So would you join me in welcoming my friend, George Hillman, to chapel today? I want to also welcome the folks here with Global Proclamation Academy. Such an incredible opportunity to impact the world. Well, the world can be divided into three types of people. There's dog people, there's cat people, and then there's people who are indifferent. And now I'm going to ask you, you're going to have to own it. So if you're a dog person, raise your hand. I'm a dog person, so dog people, raise your hands, okay? If you're cat people, raise your hands. Got some cat people here. Cat people are just as passionate. And the indifferent people, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because you're indifferent about this stuff anyway. But I'm going to tell you a story about a dog. And I hope for my cat people in the room that you will appreciate the story as well. This is Lucy. And I'm going to bring out a couple of things that are some things that are about Lucy. So I have got... Um, a coat, so it kind of gives you a perspective of size of Lucy. Have her favorite toy, so have a little woodstock here, and have a leash, and have her collar. Last month, we had to put Lucy down, 14 years old, and it's hard. I had to prepare my wife ahead of time, but I'm getting ready to talk about Lucy, and so... Um, this was the view that I'd have for Lucy for 14 years as she's staring right in my face. Well, we saw over the last six months her kind of start to become old in front of our eyes. Um, She wasn't eating as well. Uh, She was sleeping more often. And then about a week before, she started losing her eyesight. And so my wife had to follow our dog around the house to make sure that Lucy did not bump into furniture, did not bump into the walls, and would just follow her all throughout the house. And we did that till the very end. Now, Lucy had an attitude. I mean, you can look at this dog and just know Lucy had an attitude. And you know, Lucy could have looked back and said, woman, why are you following me? Give me my space. I even think at the end of her life, she realized that this is a good person that has good for me. And if you're a dog person in the room, if you're a cat person in the room, you're all in. And you will make sure nothing harms your dog. Nothing harms your cat. And you're going to follow them because you have what is good for them and you have what is loving for them. This is a very frail pet illustration to talk about an incredible truth that God is good and God is loving, is, has loving kindness for us and he follows us with his goodness and he follows us with his loving kindness and we do not deserve either one of those. It's gonna be a very familiar passage And I'm going to ask you to do something we normally don't do in here. If you're willing and able, would you please stand? And we're going to read out loud together Psalm 23. So together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. You may be seated. This is a psalm of just incredible confidence. There's no wavering. There is no ambiguity. David says, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is my shepherd and he will do what is good and loving and kind towards me. I won't go back and flip, but just listen to some of these things. It's a personal story. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord's not a shepherd. The Lord's not somebody else's shepherd. At that moment in time, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord leads me. The Lord restores me. And then it switches pronouns halfway through and says, you, Lord, are with me. You, Lord, comfort me. You, Lord, prepare a table for me. You, Lord, anoint my head and my cup overflows. We're gonna focus on the three words at the end of follow, goodness, and mercy. This first word, follow, probably a stronger English word, and if you have some of your different translations, we'll maybe have the word pursue. That is probably a better equivalency of what we're talking about here. It is this idea of a hungry animal in pursuit of its prey. Now, David, David knew what this was like. David was a shepherd. He's writing from a first-person experience, and he knew what it was like to have wild animals pursue the sheep that he was guarding. But David also knew what it was like to have people pursue him. When you read the life of David, David is sitting in the middle, surrounded by enemies on every side. All the ites are all surrounding him, and they did not want to see David be successful. David's mentor, Saul, tried to kill him. He was always looking out for maybe Saul's family is coming after me. David's own son, Absalom, tried to remove him from the kingdom. Follow, pursue. Every time that that word is used in the Psalms, except for this one time. It's always this idea of enemies pursuing me. David's always looking to his back. Who's pursuing me? Who's pursuing me? And in this unique one verse, goodness and mercy are following me. Not my enemies, not the people trying to kill me. Goodness and mercy are the things that are following me. Here are two incarnate divine attributes of goodness and mercy, and they will not rest until David is safe and David is back home. So let's look at the other two words of goodness and of mercy. Goodness, that has a theme all throughout the Psalms. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is a foundational principle. David knew the Lord's goodness. Why? Because he had experienced it over and over and over and over to infinity. He had experienced this idea of the Lord being good. Now, when you read the psalm, the circumstances in the psalm are not good. David says, I'm in a dark valley in the shadow of death. I need protection by a rod and a staff because people are out to get me. And it says, the Lord is going to prepare this table and there's enemies all the way around. The Lord's good, but the circumstances are not good. And what happens so many times, and you know this, we can... we get those two things mixed up. And we think the Lord's not good because my circumstances are not good. And we cannot mix those two things up together. I don't know your stories, but I know that some of you 
have come out of life with really bad circumstances. There's past trauma. There's past tensions in family. There's past failures. There's past struggles. And you think, I'm going to come to Dallas Theological Seminary, and those things are going to go away. And what happens is you look behind you, and guess what's following you? Those struggles, those doubts, those things continue to follow you. And I don't know your current circumstances. I know when I was a seminary student, I was never poorer in my life than I was as a seminary student. There's financial struggles, there's health struggles, there's relationship struggles. But again, circumstances and the character of who God is, those are not the same thing. David could walk through that valley, that dark valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because the good Lord was with him. David could stand in the midst of the attacks. Why? Because the good Lord was there with the rod and the staff to protect him. He could sit at the table with enemies all the way around him. Why? Because it was the good Lord who had set that table. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Here's a big point. You do not have to chase God's goodness. God's goodness is chasing after you. And you need to stop and let God's goodness catch you. More on that later. Follow goodness, mercy. That word mercy, sometimes in your translation, it's going to say loving kindness. It's the covenantial love. It's that hesed love that God the Father has for his people. Why can I experience God's goodness? I can experience God's goodness because there's hesed love that the Father has for me. And these two things are joined at the hip with one another. Just as goodness is a characteristic of who God is, this covenantial loving kindness mercy of God is a characteristic of who God is. And it's not a one-time act, it's continual. Half of the references in the Old Testament that use the word hesed are in the Psalms. Half of the references in the Psalms that deal with the word hesed comes from the pen of David. Why? Because he experienced this. David knew what it was like, I mean to screw up royally, no pun intended, to get in a hole that you can't get out of at all and to still know God loves you, to still know that there's forgiveness that's there. Have you been there? Have you been in that situation where you can't talk your way out of the sin, you can't buy your way out of the sin, you can't work your way out of the sin, you can't escape the sin that you find yourself in? God's goodness you don't have to chase after it. God's goodness is chasing after you. God's mercy, his loving kindness, you do not have to chase after it. It is chasing after you. Lucy had three choices. She couldn't see. So her three choices were this. Choice number one is that she could fight my wife. I don't want the collar. I don't want you to be around me. Back off, lady. You're standing too close to me. She could fight. Lucy could run. She was a runner. I took off the apple tag because she was a runner. You know, we knew, where's Lucy? She's down the street. She's a runner. Um, she could run away from my wife. But... Fighting my wife wouldn't help her because the only, pers the only person that had my dog's best interests at heart at that moment in time with goodness and mercy was my wife. My dog could run, but the same thing. Why are you running away from the only person who could help you? Lucy's third option was this. She could be caught by someone who loves her immensely. Someone who knows what is best for her. Someone who has her best good intentions. And the same is for us. We can run. We can fight. 
or we can get caught. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life because God's goodness and God's mercy follows us. The Lord is always good and the Lord is always faithful in his love. You will never outrun and you will never wear out the goodness or the faithful love of the Lord. David is able to look behind him and that's what he saw following him. David's past experiences and David's present joy gave David future confidence. That's why this psalm, why is this psalm so beloved by so many people? Because I want to have that confident faith that's there. And I can have that confident faith, why? Because I know the Lord is good, and I know the Lord is um, loving kindness towards me, merciful towards me, and I'm not chasing after him. He is the one that's chasing after me. Stop running. Stop fighting. And allow yourself to be caught.